Hello. My name is Gavin O'Connor and I'm Head of Biochemistry at PTB, the National Measurement Institute of Germany, and Professor of Biochemical Microbiology at TU Braunschweig's Integrated Centre for Systems Biology. I've been asked to talk to you today about the current status of achieving and assuring the international equivalence of measurement results from the reference measurement procedures performed at different national measurement institutes. I've also been asked to address the status, planning and prioritisation of reference measurement procedures for use in the development of certified reference materials are assigning SI traceable reference values for use in external quality assessment or proficiency testing schemes. To achieve this, I would like to provide some background on the current infrastructure, organisation of activities, and on how, in general, NMIs perform reference measurement procedures. I will cover how measure rounds are currently prioritised by the National Measurement Institutes, giving examples at the local and global level. I will cover the current status of key comparisons and clin for clinical measurements. I'll do this for the OAWG and PAWG of the CCQM, as this is where I have my greatest interactions. I will touch on the strategic planning on new comparisons and hence possible new reference measurement procedures. And finally, I will talk about the collaborations that I believe to be essential in delivering our goal of assuring the metrological traceability of real patient data. No matter the area of science, the everyday role of a National Measurement Institute can be broken down into three main functions. However, especially for maintenance and dissemination, these activities may be achieved in very different ways. For clinical chemi chemistry measurements, the dissemination activities can be achieved by the provision of pure substance certified reference materials or working with reference laboratories to assign target values to external quality assessment schemes. However, for those delivering high throughput services, often the provision of matrix certified reference materials is more beneficial. In dealing with the maintenance of the units, the National Measurement Institutes participate in key comparison studies organised by the working groups of the Consultative Committee for Amounts of Substance, Metrology in Chemistry and Biology, or CCQM for short. The results of these and the peer review of our services is then, are then catalogued on the BIPM key comparison database and, if appropriate, on the JCTLM database. The development of reference measurement procedures at the National Measurement Institute is a time-consuming process. The main focus or priority of our efforts is often very different to those developing more routine methods. For an NMI, maintaining and assuring the metrological traceability of the final measurement result is the most important attribute. This normally requires considering the major sources of measurement uncertainty, even in the experimental design stage, including the uncertainty on the primary calibration material and any subsequent preparation of this material for use in calibration. Selecting a calibration regime that enables the accurate transfer of the amount concentration or mass fraction from the calibrator to the sample. Many NMIs choose an exact matching isotope dilution mass spectrometry method to achieve this. Consideration of the interim instrumental sequence of analysis that may limit the influence of instrumental drift and reduce uncertainty. Many NMIs use a bracketing technique to achieve this. All of these requirements need to be met. However, it also assumes that normal 17025 lab quality control practices are in place. Even with all this, there are many pitfalls that can have an impact on the measurement results, especially on the estimation of the overall measurement uncertainty. These need to be thoroughly investigated before a reference measurement procedure is considered fit for purpose. One of the major advantages of the outline procedure is the ease in which an uncertainty budget can be constructed and the individual components of this quantified. However, there are many factors that need to be assessed. Even when using such approaches, most NMIs often add factors that deal with issues like non-equilibration. This can simply be added to the overall measurement equation and is often assigned a value of one, but the uncertainty can be simply quantified in the overall uncertainty estimation. In its simplest form, 
This can be achieved by combining the relative standard uncertainties in quadrature and the contributions to the overall estimation reviewed. This is a typical example of an exact matching IDMS uncertainty budget, where the between vial differences, referred to here as BVAR, of the observed mass fraction is a major contributor to the overall uncertainty. This level of detail is normally available for every reference value produced by a National Measurement Institute. Even with all these checks and balances in place, the National Measurement Institutes still have had some observable differences at the start. Unbeknown to the participants of the first clinical comparison of the OAWG, the same material was used in two studies. The graph shows the results and uncertainty estimations submitted by the participating NMIs just one year apart. It is clear to see that, the, that during these initial years that the CCQM enabled NMIs to discuss best practice and improve the reference measurement procedures. Many of the NMIs are driven by local legislation, and these can provide a list of priority measurements. One such example is the German Medical Association's Guide on Quality Assurance in Medical Laboratory Examinations. This is updated frequently, normally every four to five years, and has input from the German National Measurement Institutes and the designated institutes. The measurements are separated depending on biological fluid used for providing the sample. The measurement ranges, expected agreement between laboratory results, and the frequency of a proficiency testing participation are evaluated based on the impact of the measurement on clinical outcome and the state of the art of the methods used. The graph shows how the 93 measurements prioritized in blood are split across the different working groups of the CCQM, with the protein analysis working group and organic analysis working group both having more than 30 priority measurements. Local priorities can be compared with global needs by initiatives like the International Consortium for Harmonization of Clinical Laboratory Results. Here I have prioritized the Rillybeck measurements that fall in the Organic Analysis Working Group measurement space in terms of harmonization status on the y-axis and clinical need on the x-axis. Ideally for the greatest impact, global comparison of measurements in the top right-hand corner would have a maximum impact on benefit. I've highlighted in blue those measurements where key comparisons have already been competed at CCQM. I've also done the same for the protein measurements. Here, many more measurements appear in the top right section. The PAWG is a relatively new working group at CCQM and is developing strategies to deal effectively with community needs. However, the prioritization of key studies in these early stages may be as much about proving NMI's capabilities as clinical impact. Recently, the Organic Analysis Working Group conducted a survey of national measurement institutes about the services they intend to provide. Most viewed their clinical program as being driven by the needs of the clinical laboratory medicine and that a global cost-effective strategy that enables the calibration of in vitro diagnostic devices was necessary. Regulatory and quality drivers were equally highlighted in assessing the needs for their work programs, with fitness for purpose being guided by regulatory levels for routine labs, such as those provided in Rillybeck and IFCC guidelines. However, considering the range and number of measurements presented in the previous slides, the graph suggests that only 15 NMIs have planned activities in the small clinical marker, marker matrix certified reference material sector, and only seven NMIs have planned activities in the large clinical biomarker certified reference material space. The activities of these institutes will need coordination if the desired impact is to be realized. Most NMIs have reported that requests for services for an increasing concentration range and an increase in size of molecule are rising. Also, the issue of omics and our multi-parametric measurements are starting to be investigated by a small number of national measurement institutes. Previous key studies of the Organic Analysis Working Group have addressed nine measurements in serum. These were often chosen predominantly to help convey the expertise of an NMI to work on a particular type of measurement. The current rate of key studies and the sheer number of measurements suggests that NMIs will need to prove their competence 
for a broader range of measurements from one or more key studies and not on a like for like basis as in the past. Over the past two decades, the National Measurement Institutes have continued to prove their equivalence on a small number of critical measurements. These studies and their timings often coincided with a National Measurement Institute's release of a new or replacement certified reference material. A small number of NMIs have coordinated these studies. Also, where numerous providers of a certified reference material for the same measure round exists, these materials were directly compared at a single NMI. It could be argued that the availability of multiple suppliers was fueled by the selection of the measure rounds for the initial key comparisons. Therefore, greater coordination between the NMIs to make sure we have redundancy as well as a greater coverage of the measure rounds is required. I have shown here the priority measure rounds from the Rillybeck and the ICHCLR list for the relevant mole molecules of interest to the Organic Analysis Working Group. The amount concentration spans over 10 orders of magnitude and the complexity of the molecule can be gauged by the relative molecular mass, which ranges from 46 to 1,449 grams per mole. Here I have tried to map the ICHCLR priorities onto the measurements. The colour of the filled boxes represents the harmonisation need and the colour of the border represents the clinical classification. As expected, the graph suggests the small, more abundant measurements in the lower right hand corner of the graph are adequately serviced, all being a nice green colour. And as the complexity of the molecule increases and amount concentration decreases, these molecules are more likely to need greater harmonisation. If I now highlight the measurements where key studies have been concluded, you can see a large number, again in the lower right hand side of the graph, representing small molecules of high concentration. However, the graph also suggests that the studies performed at lower concentration ranges were not always driven by harmonisation or clinical relevance. So a question I have for the discussion sessions later on is, should we continue to prioritise a small selection of measurements due to their measurement challenges or extend the range to meet the stakeholder needs directly at the organic analysis working group level. If I now map the measurements onto the attributes we use to define the analytical landscape in the organic analysis working group, this is what we see. The filled blue circles represent past key studies and the filled rep red circles represent measurements of high clinical need. From this, it becomes obvious a gap exists in our current comparisons for a specific sector. So I now have a second question to be addressed in the discussion sessions. With this obvious gap, should NMI start to make plans on how to address this? This is basically tossing up between stakeholders' needs versus the capability to demonstrate our, our ability in a certain sector. The current plan for the OAWG is to assess the capability for large molecular pure materials and multi-component standard solutions and to provide matrix comparison every three years. These studies have, have already started to address many of the issues I raised. For example, the small molecule biomarker in serum just completed was for an amino acid and not for creatinine, glucose or urea. In the protein area, we have similar issues in terms of the orders of magnitude in amount concentration in serum, as well as the increasing degree of complexity of the measurements. I've highlighted the measurements that are currently being studied. The first protein analysis working group key comparisons in a matrix on haemoglobin and human growth hormone are, plan are in the planning stages, and a pilot study on glycated haemoglobin is ongoing. Along with these, the BIPM have been coordinating a series of studies on peptide purity assignment, and the first key comparison on enzyme activity is also in the planning stages. As expected, many NMIs have also been comparing compar capabilities for the characterization of a SARS-CoV-2 antibody. Concerning our interactions with other stakeholders, the National Measurement Institutes are well represented 
on the Joint Committee of Traceability in Laboratory Medicine. And we are aware and are trying to address the requests to gain more awareness of community quality standards, have greater consideration for these and commutability issues when designing studies and producing materials. Also, the use of IFCC EQUAS in review of the reference measurement procedures may be a way to directly link these services with the NMI's CMCs. We have tried to improve the interaction with the working groups of IFCC. We have members now working in groups focusing on the standardization of particular measurements, and more recently, we now have a formal representative from a network of European national measurement institutes attending meetings of the Committee on Traceability in Laboratory Medicine. This working group supports traceability in laboratory medicine by operating as a link between the scientific division and the working groups of IFCC, the Joint Committee on Traceability in Laboratory Medicine, and a global network of reference laboratories. Such collaborative interactions are essential if the NMIs are to prioritise their activities for greater impact. Realising that the number and range of requests in the clinical sector vastly exceed the resources of a single national measurement institute, Euromet has approved the formation of a European metrology network for traceability in laboratory medicine. This comprises 12 national measurement institutes or designated institutes from nine different countries. Currently, the EMN chair is Dr. Rainer Stosch, and the aims of the EMN are to support the European reference laboratories and in vitro diagnostic manufacturers meet the needs of the new European in vitro diagnostic regulation. Also, to create a more joined up service oriented metrology infrastructure to fulfil the needs for disseminating metrological traceability for clinical laboratory medicine. This is a newly formed European Metrology Network, and hopefully we will start to see the benefits of better coordination in the near future. For those of you watching these lectures in the order as advertised in the programme, our next speaker, Dr. Lisbeth Dupre from the Joint Research Centre, will address the topic of commutability. The National Measurement Institutes are fully committed to trying to provide and enable the realisation of metrological traceability in patient data. To achieve this, the materials used to calibrate in vitro diagnostic devices must be commutable. The above is a recent example from colleagues at NIST and NIH in the USA assessing the NIST reference measurement procedure and a number of in vitro diagnostic devices for the confiscation of hydroxyvitamin D and serum. In this study, they assessed the reference measurement procedure along with the certified reference materials, EQA samples and real patient samples. In order to achieve this on an exact matching IDMS procedure, the one used by many national measurement institutes, it would require over 500 hours of LCMS time alone. And that doesn't take into consideration the weighing time required for making each blend. Therefore, it is essential that we work closely as a community to understand how we achieve this type of interaction while still providing fit for purpose reference values for certified reference materials. In conclusion, the National Measurement Institutes have many years experience for small molecule organic analytes in clin of clinical relevance. As a group, we need to do more to address new types of sampling, but we hope to hold workshops in the near future to address this. We have started to address automation and new technologies to improve the scope of our offer offering in new areas. We need more information from more countries on the priority measurements, and it would be very useful to know how these priorities are being set. We have started to establish a more fit for purpose assessment of key comparisons to expand the range of services and measurements offered by the NMIs. We are now actively seeking greater engagement with the clinical laboratory community, such as the use of real materials in key comparison studies and in greater participation in IFCC working groups. Finally, many of us are well aware of the famous quotation from Lord Kelvin, to measure is to know. At the National Measurement Institutes, we have developed great expertise in establishing full metrological traceability for the results on what we measure. As we continue to expand our services into clinical laboratory measurement, we are now very well aware of the gaps between what we measure and what we intend to measure. 
However, sometimes knowing what to measure is not evident. And measuring the wrong characteristics just because we can will not provide the solution. The solution lies in working together with clinicians, clinical laboratory medicine practitioners, in vitro diagnostic manufacturers and other measurement institutes to enable the real benefits of metrological traceable patient measurement results to be realised. We look forward to working with you to realise these aims. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.